Hello, my name is Robin Forsyth of Feral Nifty, and welcome to Here and Now Online presented by Arts Whistler. We have wonderful live original music from the Whistler music scene for you every Thursday night at 7 p.m. And tonight we have Bob and Charlie. They are from different sides of the world. They are from different generations, but they make beautiful music together. Please welcome Bob and Charlie. Thank you, Robin. This song is called Alpen Rose. I wrote it. It's in the style of Little Sunflower by Freddie Hubbard. This next song is called In Your Eyes, The Light Is Gone. Um, it's a bittersweet love song written in the style of my funny valentine. Thank you. 
Clean from your gaze a crystal maze of love lost to the sun. But I know now, I know in your eye the dark is still. Can't decide where my heart lies, it's bound up in the thrill. Hypnotized by those cold eyes that captivate me still. But with time, the warning signs grow stronger in me still. Gentlemen, that was a great show. It was very creative and inspired. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you about the stories behind some of those songs. Can you give me a little insight on the uh, on into the first song, Aspen? Alpen Rose. Alpen Rose. The Alpen song is Alpen Rose. Uh, well I come from a jazz background, and I wanted to write a song that uh, reflected some of the vast repertoire that's out there. And a song that Charlie and I had played a few times called Little Sunflower by Freddie Hubbard. And it's got this real sort of a minor kind of a sad vibe, but then it jumps into a major key, which is happy. So it goes back and forth between sad and happy. And uh, that was my inspiration for writing Alpen Rose. Fantastic. Now you uh, helped on the other song. You, you co-wrote Earth. Earth is what Earth is watching you. That w yeah, yes. so that that was Bob's brainchild from the start, and then we sort of adapted it together. Um, it was our only our first attempts at kind of that collaborative process in writing original music, which was sweet 
uh, it was just an interesting process to see what um, what we came up with. Do you both take separate uh, jobs within the writing process, or do you actually collaborate on lyrics well and every and like on all aspects of it? The the um the ma- so he had come up with a melody, and um, I to to make it my own, I just uh, I came I up with some really I don't know. Not great lyrics, not poetic, not terribly poetic. Oh I think Charlie yeah. is definitely the poet. And so he he uh, worked on the lyrics and brought some poetry into them. And I think it improved it vastly. Excellent. How did you guys meet? Um, w- well, when I first arrived in Whistler, maybe about a year ago, um, I was taking myself to Black's Pub. There was a jam night there and by Costa Matt. Um, he features in it. And uh, yeah. one, w- yeah, w- Wednesday one night rolled along. And uh, actually, I think we can owe it to Costa to to have. Um, he, he has a great skill of uniting musicians and like definitely birthing collaborations. Yeah. And he kind of makes it. He said said to you that he thinks it's his life work in in a sense. Um, and yeah, so he uh, he said you guys you guys would work together. I think and. I found myself on stage. I was uh, uh, um, new to jazz music, but I had a couple of things up my sleeve, and Bob was just all over it. So he 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 jumped in there on the saxophone, and uh, which was a lot of fun because uh, it's really great to meet a, a jazz player, especially somebody you know, as young as Charlie that's already got his chops down really, I think, pretty solidly on the guitar. So it was a lot right. of fun to really start collaborating and start playing. I think. You need to share that little part about you running after him with the business card. <laughs> uh, well, he's a businessman. <laughs> that's where the experience of in my former life. That's right. Yeah. As a bu- uh, business guy, so you know, I printed up some little cards with uh, what pink elephants on them. I think so. It's a green card. A green card with a pink elephant. Yeah. That's right. So Sax green card. Beach Westy, uh, which is still your <laughs> that's my one handle. of your emails. That's right. If yeah. you're not in the nerdy one. And uh, yeah, as he was leaving, I gave him my card and I said, "Let's see if we can m- do some more playing." I was too embarrassed to, <laughs> to to say that I enjoyed it. <laughs> it. Yeah, but clearly you did, and now you guys oh, are here, are, so. yeah. and you guys have more plans. We do. We're working on an album. Yeah, this 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 whole thing has been the catalyst to us thinking. Actually, this it would be great if we, you know, um, just put uh, put all of our work into t- into writing some original music, and. Uh, yeah, so that hope hopefully in the near not so distant future that will come to a head. Yeah. Awesome. I asked you another question, and then I'm going to bring out the wheel. Oh. But when We're I ready. <laughs> I asked you it um, in an email uh, what you feared, and I really thought it was interesting what you both said because it was different, and I can't think it came from a place of where you are in life. Your answer. Do you remember your answer? I'm concerned about yeah, what uh, how younger people are going to deal with the arts. Uh, music, I'm involved with that, especially with what's going on right now. Really concerned how music is collapsing everywhere, especially live music, of course. Mm-hmm. And it's a big concern. Yeah. Do you remember your um, answer? Well, it's. I think. I think we're just in. It goes without saying we're in very uncertain times. There's a lot of. There's a lot of change. Paradigm shift in just about everything in our world, and. Um, Music has become all the more... Imp- I, I've definitely reconnected with it over the last month, but actually, without the support of, I suppose, it's just like capitalist system, like framework breaking down to support musicians mm-hmm. so that I can make a living. Because if I wanted to make a living out of, out of music, then i got to get paid for it somehow and this stuff. Um, and I suppose just for all that pressure to discourage young artists from, like, budding would, would, would be awful. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. Well, then let's lift the questions up a little and add a spin wheel. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Who shall take the wheel first? I'll take a spin. Oh, Here okay. we go. Ready, set, go. Ominous. Where can people listen to your stuff apart from here? We do have stuff on YouTube. Not um, 
Not a, not a great deal, but on my on my channel, Charles Stenner. Um, Again, one more time for everyone yeah. to hear. Charles Stenner. That's my full name. Okay. Oh boy. And uh, and there you can find uh, a cover of Tom Mish's "South of the River," which is a more upbeat kind of funky thing that we were, yeah, doing over the winter time. Um, I don't think whether did we ever put up "Fly Me to the Moon." I don't think so. Hmm. Well, there we are. Should should be the you next one. There we go. <laughs> You've got an assignment. Yeah. Right. You probably should spin the wheel next. Okay. I'm looking at it like, yeah, it's going to tell me something. It's going to tell me. What is your favorite decade for music? Bob, take me back. <laughs> My favorite decade is right now. Because there's so much happening and there's a, the whole spectrum of music available. I think it's never been better. That's a really good answer. You could have you could have picked all of the <laughs> prior decades to me being born, <laughs> and you chose the one that I was going to choose. There you go. <laughs> so, I but I'd have to agree because um, all of the genres are colliding and they're all kind of um, influencing uh, each other in weird and wonderful ways. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's brilliant. I agree, but I hadn't thought of that. Mm. As an answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, thank you. All right. You ready? One more spin for you. Okay. I'm in. What is the most ridiculous song you've ever written, and how did it come about? I can answer this one. Oh, I have two, but one's inappropriate. <laughs> my my first one was a complete and utter rip-off. It was, um, I just picked up the guitar and I called it, I think I called it I Had a Junkie Friend, but it was Another Girl, Another Planet, which is power chords. I always flirt with death. I guess <laughs> <laughs> give us, give it, give it to us, show us. Um, Full chorus, come on. Ah, uh -huh. well, it just, I think I only had the the verse down to 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 the lyrics. I had a junkie friend, and I mind you, bearing in mind I'm like fourteen, and I probably didn't know what junkie friend meant. <laughs> uh, so I wasn't into hard drugs at this time. Not that I am now. <laughs> um, yeah, I have an, another inappropriate one, but I'll let Bob take over to <laughs> scoot me out of that. The most ridiculous song. Ridiculous is the question. Is yes. the question the most ridiculous song? Well, I one of the first songs I tried to write was uh, was a bossa nova, and I came up with a wonderful title called Wanderlust, which is not really you know, sort of a, a Spanish word at all. It's like German, a German word describing a a sense of trying to walk around. So it was uh, it, it already started off as a collision right off the get go. <laughs> so I think it was one of them. <laughs> I do have another one actually. Wow. Well, in my in my first house in Whistler in Creekside, the washing machine had like a really rhythmical, like, it had a figure that repeated. And I set up my field microphone and recorded it and have made a song out of the sound of my washing machine, which is pretty ridiculous, but it... But it worked. It's got groove. Yeah. It's got groove. It's a groovy Samsung or like... Or Absolutely. Frigi <laughs> frigi oh, I've got I no idea. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, yeah, yeah. Kenmore. It worked. <laughs> the Kenmore always had a really distinct rhythm, didn't it? Because they're always at the verge of breaking down. <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> that's, <yeah>. right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. It was Thank great you, to have you here. Thank you, Robin. This song is called Earth is Watching You. It was co-written between Charlie and myself. And you know, there's been a lot of love songs written between people but not so many love songs written between the earth and humans. This is our attempt.
Just in your hands, been so long, oh so long, left beneath your care. But you won't learn just how much we share. Thank you again, Bob and Charlie. Remember to join us next week at 7 p.m. for Brother Twank.